Hi, welcome to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you a variety of different drawing techniques in Word to enable you to pretty much draw whatever you like. But I must warn you, this is not Photoshop, it is clunky, it can be a little bit frustrating, but there are still a number of things that you can do that are really, really effective. So I've just inserted this image here because I think these flowers and images here will cover pretty much all the techniques that are available in Word to create various images or illustrations. So if we go up to the draw ribbon here, very simply, we've got a range of different pens available. If you click on one of the pens and then there's a little drop down, you have another menu. These circles here enable you to change the nib of your pen or the thickness of your pen. So you can see here we're currently on the smallest. And if I draw across here, you can see that size. And if I increase it to the largest, you can see the difference there. And again, you've got a variety of different color options for your pen, and you've also got more colors at the bottom where you can access the color wheel. You can move this cursor anywhere you like in the color wheel and make that color lighter or darker. The color you've chosen will appear here and then just click OK. And then you can select your pen once more and draw using that color. Once you've finished drawing, to get out of the drawing element, just hit the escape key on your keyboard and then it will go back to your normal cursor. All of these pens here offer something slightly different. So for example, this one here, if you draw with this one, it will create a slight pencil effect. We've got highlighters here. If you can't find the highlighter, click add pen and you can see we've got a variety of options here. Just add it to your menu. Here we've got a textured pen and if you want to use an effect or text just click on that one and then it will draw out that texture. Once you release yourself from the drawing pens, once you click on one of your pens you can actually move the element that you've made, you can resize it, you can also slightly change the shape by changing the ratio and also if you select it and go to shape format Go over to Format Pane and here you can actually change the colour if you've picked the wrong colour and you can also change the width of it as well. So I can increase or decrease the size of it using these arrow keys and those are the only customizations you can do with the pen once you've completed the drawing. Now over here if I click on this one you can see I've selected all of that and I can move it around but it doesn't always select everything together. So for example, I've done two elements here. If I wanted to join these two elements together, select the one element, hold your command or control key down and select the other element, go to shape format, go along to group, click on the drop down and select group, and it will group those two elements together. So let's go ahead and show you this flower here. So we'd go to draw, select the pen of our choice. Let's select this one and let's select black. And if we just select the stem and then I must make you aware that I'm not actually using a mouse, I'm using a Wacom pen. So it does make drawing a lot easier. Just press escape. Again, I warn you, I'm also not an artist. So if I click on the top here, now you can see how Word has just selected some of the elements of this flower and not all of it. So if I wanted to move it, you can see I'm only going to move the top bit. So if I want it as one complete flower, I need to once again select all the parts by holding down that Alt or Option key, go into Shape Format, go to Group, click on the drop down and select Group, and now I can move it. I can also resize it, as I said before which is a really useful tool to have. Now for the internal part here, if I then go back up to draw, I can select a different pen. Let's select a recent color and I'll select the largest nib there. And all I'm going to do is paint inside the flower. Not particularly accurate, but that's what the drawing is like. You can see, let's just press the escape key, you can see that this is over the top 
of our original flower and we want those lines to come through. So select it, go to Shape Format and go to the Send Backwards, click on the drop down, select Centre Back. Deselect it and you can see now we can see those lines through it. If you wanted to go ahead and do the same with the leaves, you could just change the colour. So go back to Draw, click on the drop down for the pen and just select a different colour. And once again, we can go over that. Okay, so that's how you can use the pen elements. And what you can do is also import an image. So let's just get rid of this flower a minute and all the elements. If you wanted to, you could simply import an image and then use the drawing tool to actually trace over the image itself that could give you potentially a more accurate drawing rather than relying on your copying skills. Then all you have to do is just move the photograph or delete it and you'll have your tracing. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that and show you some more techniques that are really, really useful. So let's just look at this flower here. If we go to insert, shapes, and you can really for this pick any shape that you want to because we're gonna, I'm gonna teach you how you can transform this shape into pretty much anything. So let's just select this round cornered square. And when you insert a shape, every single shape will come with a border line. Now you can get rid of that if you want to by selecting shape format. If it's not there, it's because you haven't selected the shape. Then go to this icon here, which is the outline icon and go to no outline. And then there won't be an outline around your shape. Now, once you select this shape, you can go over to edit shape, click on the drop down, and you can select this tool here, which is incredibly useful and really can customize your images. Select edit points. And as you can see now, let's zoom in. We've got all these black points around the edge of our shape. Now, if you click and drag these points, they will move the outline of your shape to fit your needs. Now, what these points will have are these handles. And as you click and move these handles, it will move the curvature of that point. And you really can create anything you like. To add a point, just click on the red line and drag, and it will add a point. And to get rid of it, hold down your control key and click and the point will disappear. One key element to this is that if you want a perfect curve, when you're on the point, these handles must be perfectly in line to create a perfect curve. If they're not, the curve will not be perfect. So we need to create this shape below. So we're looking at creating this shape here. So we can move this shape now over the top of our image reduce the size of it. We can either move it alongside or over the top, it doesn't matter. Go to Shape Format, go to Edit Shape, Edit Points, and now we can begin the process of starting to work out how we're gonna make this shape. So again, using the handles, I'm gonna create the curve. You just have to keep moving these handles around till you create, it takes a little bit of practice to know exactly how they work but you will get the hang of it. Just adding some points, just clicking and dragging down to add some points and then moving those around. Move those handles so that, that curve is at the top there. We want a slightly more acute angle on that curve there. Same with this one. Okay, once you're happy, just click away and you can see the type of shape that you've been left with. Again, you can completely resize this. You can flip it, you can extend it, and you can go back and make those adjustments. Because this is a shape, we have a lot more options with it. So if you select it and go to Shape Format, if you go over to this Format Pane icon here, you'll see we have these options under the buckets. We've got Fill and Line. 
So the line means that you can put a borderline in. So again, go to solid line. You can change the color of that borderline. You can see it going around the outside there, or you can select no line without a border. Additionally, we've also got gradients at the top here. So you click on gradient fill. You can use these sliders to change the color and change your gradient. If you want to take out some of these sliders here, select it, press the minus sign, select it, press the minus sign. And then if you select these markers, you can click on any color you like and just change the color. And then you can also change the transparency here of that color and also click on this one and change the transparency of that color as well. So you've got quite a few options. You can change the direction of your gradient by using these options here, depending on where you want the light to come from. And also the type, you can have a radial one as well. Won't make too much difference from this perspective, but if you've got a larger image, it will. The other thing I'm going to show you is how you can put additional shapes on top. So you can see this highlight here. Now you can go back and use the original text from the draw icon here. So we can select a pen Go down and select a different color. Let's select white. Let's select the nib size about this one here. And then you can simply draw in that highlight with the pen if you want to be quick about it. We can go back and insert a shape and we can insert a square. We can get rid of the outline again. And again, go to edit shape, edit points. And again, we can create a highlight using exactly the same technique as we just did, making sure that all these are now curves by pulling down those handles so that they are creating one line across. And then you can go ahead and change the color of that shape to any color you like. If you want this shape to attach itself to the actual flower, select one of them hold down the command and control key to select the other one. You'll be on shape format already. Go to group and select group. And now you've got that as one element. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to create these elements here. So let's go to insert shapes. I'm going to click on a circle and just drag out a circle. Then I'm going to go to format shape, edit shape, edit points and then click on this one here. Now for this one, you'll see that when I move the handles, they both move. But if I click my alter option key, there we go, we can just click one handle. So once we've created the basic shape, let's take out the outline. So select it, no outline. We're going to create these elements here. Now, as you can see, this is only going to work if you have the same color background, you want to use the same color background. So again, go to insert shape, click on any shape. Let's click and drag out a circle. We can rotate it. Let's take out the outline. And for the shape fill, if we click white, you will be able to see that shape because the background is different. So you'll have to match the background, go to more fill colors, you have to match the background using the cursor, but if you're fortunate enough to have this eyedropper tool, click on it, click on the background, click OK, and you can see now we've got a perfect match. If you want to change the shape, again, select it, go to shape format, edit shape, edit points. Once you're happy, you can actually copy this by selecting it, hold down the Alt or Option key, click and drag, and then deselect them both, reselect one of them, then you can turn it round, make it bigger or smaller, change the shape. Again, you can edit the points to make a slightly different shape. Perfect. And you can go all the way through that to create the outlines of this leaf here. Once you're finished, you can create a drawing effect by using a pen again, and you can simply go around and draw around it, creating that slightly sketchy effect all the way around your leaf producing a very similar effect to this flower here. Just press escape and then you've got that outline that you can use. So I'm now just gonna speed up the video and create something.
And at the end of it, I'm going to show you how to export it because you can export all of this as a JPEG. Okay, so once you finish your design, you need to group absolutely everything together. So select everything by holding down that command or control key. Sometimes you might have to do this bit by bit. So for example, just select as much as you can click on. Then go to group and select group. Now if I move it, great, everything is selected. But if I move this and something wasn't selected, if you hit the command and control key and the Z key, it will take you back one step and realign everything. Then click on the item that hasn't been selected and the rest of it and group that together and keep doing that until it's all grouped together and you've got it as one element. Now you can simply right click and you can go down to save as picture. Then you can rename it. And if you save this as a PNG file, then it will just save the image. It won't save the background, so there'll be no white background to it. It will literally just save the flowers. Then you can put it on to any background you like. However, the white elements of this leaf here will show through if you put this on another colored background. But if you want to put it on the back of another white background, it will work perfect. That's the only downside with doing cutouts like this is it will show if you put it on top of another background. Once you save this as a PNG, you can also save it as a JPEG. If you save it as a JPEG, it will have the white background, but then you can use it wherever you like with that white background. And also you can resize it as well. So that's a real advantage. And then just simply click save. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please like and subscribe and have a great day.